All right, so is this, this making sense? So we're on 11, 4 here. We're wanting to multiply C times B, multiply these two matrices. Here's matrix C, here's matrix B. I gave the sizes, you go down and across, it's a 3 by 2, and down and across, it's a 2 by 3. The inside numbers match, so that means we can do it. It's a green light go. The, out, the two outside numbers tell you the size of the answer matrix. It's going to be a 3 by 3. So here's the steps on the calculator. So first off, you and now you enter, oh, you do the size. So now it's matrix C. Matrix C, and you, um, it's a, what is it again? It's a 3 by 2, and then input, input the numbers. So that's for that one. Then, and oh, and you have to go second quit. When you're done, yeah, when you're done entering all the numbers for matrix C, you have to hit second quit is right at the top of the screen. It's the mode button, right above the mode button. Second quit. And then you have to go back in and, and you go second matrix. Go over twice to the edit menu. Go down to B and hit enter because now we're going to put in matrix B. And then how do you do matrix B? You tell it it's a 2 by 3, and then you input the numbers. Oh, not inputs, but input the numbers. And also then you go second quit. You have to quit against kind of like once you put in a word processing document, then you save it and close it. It's kind of what we're doing. The matrix, every time we hit enter, it saves that number. And, we hit enter on the last number, it's all saved, and then just hit second, quit. And then, now, now what do we do? Then we, um, then we go back, hit second matrix again. And you're going to be on the what? The names menu, right? You're already on the names menu. Second matrix names. Go down to something. What is it? A C. Go down to C and hit enter. So that calls forth the C. On Remember the names, the naming of it is like a, I always call it like a magic spell, like Harry Potter or something where you're calling forth the thing, right? So you're calling forth the C, to the, you're naming it to the main screen, bringing it up to, to actually do something with it now. And then you go times on the main screen. And then you do second matrix names down to B. Enter, and then you hit enter, and you'll have C times B. All right, so is that good? Do you want me to show that one more time, make sure we're all on board with all of that? So there's the steps. If you got all that copied down, I'll let you copy that down, then I'll, so I'm going to go over here and put it in. Oops, I did the wrong one already. So matrix C is a what? A 3 by 2. And I just put 6. 1, 3, 4, 6. Second quit. Okay. And matrix B. B is a 2 by 3. Make sure you use the negatives, not the subtraction button. All right, so I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. I'm whipping it out here. So, yeah, let me go back. So I just finished. I was over here. I just finished entering matrix B. It's all in there. It's all good. And I hit second quit, and then I'm going to call them forth. So I go second matrix, and I go, okay. Now, see how it's on names? I'm just going to go down. I'm going to name matrix C. Name it, hit enter. Boom. It calls forth the C to the main screen. Now I just hit the, the, the actual literal times button right down here. Times. Just like that. Just times right here. Times. And then I go back to second matrix. Second matrix. And I'm going to name B. Go down to B. Name it. Enter. It calls forth the B. So that's matrix C times matrix B. Enter. There it is. So there's my answer matrix. So 
So the answer matrix is, what is it, 26, 8, negative 6, 16, 6, negative 6, and negative 44, 8, negative 36. Is that good? Is that working out for you okay on the calculator? Questions I can answer on that? All right, I'll move on if you're good. Um, so this one, I'm going to say the same thing. Just use your calculator, right? C, you put the parentheses, to, you know, put in A, B, and C, and just put C, parentheses, A plus B. Oh, good, thank you. So you want to make C times parentheses matrix A plus B. Yeah, it doesn't know that it automatically means multiply. Uh, some, I think some calculators do, some don't, but anyway, some of them don't, so I'll... Yeah, right. Good. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah, you got to do it like that. Thank you. So I'll leave it at that. All right. So so one more time. Everybody, does everybody understand for question number six that when they go C prince A plus B, you got to put in the actual multiply symbol on your graphing calculator, or it won't know that being next to a parenthesis means multiply. Some some do, but some calculators do, some don't. All right. Good, thank you. So looking at number seven, they're talking about this 5i2. I mean, I, I know you know how to do the AB. No problem there. Just put A in your calculator, B in your calculator, do the AB thing. But what's 5i2? Well, this, this, to, to understand that, we have to think about what plays the role of the identity element in the world of matrices. We're thinking about a foreign world here, uh, a foreign map world. And, um, and so when you make up, remember they made up these matrices, boxes with numbers, because they were useful for something, which I can't remember exactly remember what it was when they first made them up. But anyway, we use them for lots of things now. And in this world of these matrices, we're learning the rules for how you add two matrices, subtract two matrices, multiply and divide, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, matrices. You also have to, whenever you have a system of things, you have to have somebody that plays the role of one. Now, what do I mean plays the role of one? Well, think about what one does for us in the real number system. Think about the real number system for a minute. The real numbers. The numbers you're used to. The numbers you're at home with. What does one do? One's what we call the unity element or the identity. It's probably most commonly referred to as the identity element. That's how higher math people talk. If you, go, if you go into higher math, beyond calculus and stuff, if you get a math degree, you have, to, you have to deal with like systems that are foreign and you prove and discuss things about other made-up number systems. And so you, you really learn more about the regular number systems. Anyway, long story short, anything you multiply one by, what happens? It gives you itself back. It's like a mirror, isn't it? One is like a mirror. Anything times one is itself. Isn't it? it just reflects back. Like when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. When you multiply by one, you get yourself back. That's the role that one plays in the world of numbers. Okay, so in the matrix world, what matrix will do that for us? Like what, what, what could, I, could I take the matrix, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, and multiply by what? What matrix and just get five, six, seven, eight back? You know, which, which matrix will, will do the identity thing will give me back identically what I multiply by? Yeah, well, if you had to guess, what, what do you think goes here? What matrix will, you'll start and end with the same thing. It's like a big one, right? What matrix will behave like a big one, will be the identity element for us? What do you think? If you had to guess, what matrix do you think it is? Anybody, anybody see this? They don't do, they don't do um, matrices in high school anymore in algebra 2? No. No matrices. Nobody knows? I, if it was me, if I, if I didn't know already, but if I was guessing for the first time, I would think you would just do ones everywhere. But that doesn't work. That's how you could test it. This times this is not that. That's not true. It doesn't work. It's not ones everywhere, it turns out. It's close, though. It's ones down the diagonal, but zeros everywhere else. That's the one. That's the identity element. And that's, that's what we, in fact, that's what we call I2, because that's the 2 by 2. If you're dealing with 3 by 3 matrices, 
You'd have ones. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, again. Uh, down the whole diagonal again with zeros everywhere else, etc. You get it. So however big the matrices are you're dealing with, the big one, the identity element in the matrix world is ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. You can test it out. If you actually multiply those, you would you get back 5, 6, 7, 8. So is that why right. uh, I noticed that's what we get when we do RF. RREF? Yeah, when we use the RREF, that's what we get. Uh, next yeah, time. it's related. I, I'll try to explain some more maybe in a minute. All right. Yeah, there's a connection. You're right. Good observation. There is a connection there, Ryan. You're right. So that's, so that's the big one. So that plays the role of one, the identity element. Does it matter which way the ones go diagonal? It does. Yeah, you've got to start in the upper left. Yeah, you can't do, yeah. Yeah, good question, too. This is called the main diagonal. We're going to do something special with the main and the other diagonal in a minute. So it's a good time to even mention that word. The main diagonal is always the diagonal that starts in the first entry. We call that. The other diagonal would be called the secondary diagonal. So it's got to be down the main diagonal. So that's the big one. He acts like a one, meaning he's, he gives you identically back whatever you multiply by. He's the identity element. Okay, so what? Well, then getting back to this question, when they say they want you to do AB plus 5I2, you just put A in your calculator, put B in your calculator, and then you've got to put something, call it C, and, and it's got to be I2. This is going to be I2, which means 2 by 2 identity element. So just call that matrix C, for example, or D or E or whatever you want to call it. You know? And then just put into your calculator matrix A times matrix B plus 5 times matrix C, because that'll be the I2. And hit the buttons on your calculator. Good enough? Making sense? So just to make, make C be the I2. And then just type this into your calculator, except the I2 will be C. All is well. I'll move on. Okay, now they're asking for the inverse. Inverse. Now, what's an inverse? Well, let's, let's, think about, let's think about the real numbers. Bless you. Let's think about the real numbers for a minute. What's the inverse of a real number? Say I take like 7. What's his inverse? It's 1 seventh, isn't it? We call that the multiplicative inverse, meaning, meaning if you take 7 times 1 seventh, what do you get? The identity element. Do you see the connection on a deeper level? I know we just say, well, it's one. Right, but, but who is that one, really? He's the identity element. So the inverse in a, in a system is the thing you multiply by to get back to the identity element. That's the deeper thought behind it. You see that idea? You see that concept? That's what they, what they make you think on in higher math. So what an inverse truly is, is something you multiply by and get back to the unity element. Right? The identity element. So, okay, so that's the inverse in the real number system. What's the inverse in, in the matrix world? How do, we, how do we do that? Well, first off, let's just hit the buttons on your calculator. Then I'll talk about another way. But mainly, it's hit the buttons on your calculator. So what I would do is I would just say, let's just put into A, the, you know, that, just call that matrix A, put it, store it into your calculator, enter that into matrix A, and then just go A, and then hit that X to the minus 1 button, you know, which is, it's got the matrix above it, and enter, and that'll, that'll find it for you. So can you do that real quick? So put in matrix A, and then hit the inverse button. So go over to edit, matrix A is a 2 by 2, minus 8, 1, 1, 1, second quit, call forth matrix A to the main screen, hit the inverse button, here's what I'm getting. Um, something crazy. Wait, did I do it right? I think I did something bad. I went too quick, I think. Let me think. Let me see. Oh, no, it's right. Okay. Hmm. You getting something weird? Oh, there we go. When you're done, hit math, enter, enter. And what that'll do is it'll change it to fraction. You get some decimal negative point one 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 one. Getting all that? Hit math enter enter. It will change 
two fractions. It'll change the whole answer to fractions. Then I'm getting minus one ninth, one ninth, one ninth, eight ninth. Like that. Did you get that? By hitting math. So when, whenever you, if you have a decimal answer and you want to change to fractions, you just hit math. Enter, enter, because math, the first option will say change to fraction. You hit enter, yes, that's what I want to do. Hit enter one more time, it'll do it. So you're able to get that. That is the inverse. That's the inverse matrix. How we doing? You guys getting that to work out okay? So, yeah, I will show you the by hand method in a second. Because one of the. Uh, it might, yeah, so that would be. I mean, you, I could put it on the calculator part. You couldn't do anything with the calculator when there's, since there's letters. Yeah, so, yeah, let me, so let me show you. How did it, how, what did it just do? What are the steps to do it by hand? Let me show you. Let me redo this problem by hand. It's not super important. I, you know, I me, mean, there's not a lot of secrets with me. I'm. I'm probably not going to give you a two-by-two two you have to do by hand. So, but let me show you the by-hand rules. So by hand, you might, but I, I do want to officially show it to you. For those of you that are going to higher math, if you're going to go higher, uh, especially after calculus or something called linear algebra, you do got to know the rules of, of doing these by hand. So um, how does it work? So, um, so if you start with, uh, well, yeah, here, let me just... Let me, let, me, let me call it A, B, C, D. So, well, here, S is, I'm not doing this very good. All right. By hand. By hand. So you start with, let's say, A, B, C, D, call it. Some, some two by two. And this is just the rules for doing a two by two. What do you do? Step number one, switch main diagonal. What's the main? So here I'm referring to the main, like I talked about a minute ago. That would be this. This is the main. That right starts in the upper left corner. That's the main. Step two, change the signs on the other diagonal. And then step three, divide all four by what's called the determinant. Determinant, which is AD minus BC. So, in other words, what you end up having. So, I switch these guys. You switch so that D goes here and A goes there. So far, so good. Switch the main diagonal. This is how you would do this by hand. Change the signs on the other diagonal. Minus B. Minus C. They stay put. You just change their signs. So far, so good. So I just switch the main diagonal, change the signs on the other diagonal, and then I divide all four of them 
by AD minus BC, what's called the determinant. I'll just say DET, determinant. It'll be a number. And that's it. That's the inverse. That's what your calculator is doing. Well, it might be doing it a different way, but that will give you the inverse. Does that make sense? Let's, let's try it on this one. Let's switch the main diagonal. So 1 will go here, negative 8 will go there. So far, so good. I just switch those. Change the sign on the other diagonal. Mine, make the two, these two 1s into minus 1, minus 1. And then divide all four of them by the determinant. What is the determinant? How are we doing? Am I racing ahead of you? I feel like I'm losing you. Are you fading away? Are you thinking about your weekend plans? It's only Tuesday. Not yet. We good? Is this making sense? So I switched the main diagonal change the signs on the other diagonal, and then divide all four by the determinant. Now, what is the determinant? I wrote it this way, but if you think about what that is, that's the main diagonal minus the other diagonal. It's all about these diagonals. So that's the main diagonal, negative 8 times 1, right, these two, minus the other two, 1 times 1. Do you see that? That's AD minus BC. AD is these two. BC is those two. It's main diagonal multiplied minus other diagonal multiplied. So what's that? Negative 8 minus 1, negative 9. Divide all four of these by negative 9, and there you go. That's the answer we got. That's the answer the calculator gave us. You see? See how to do that by hand? So again, you switch the main diagonal. Change the signs on the other diagonal, and then divide all four by main diagonal minus other diagonal. It'll work with the end one or the original. It'll work either way. Yeah. Now, do you only switch the negative eight to one? Because the two other two ones are both. Like, there was negative eight and two, and one and two. Negative eight and two, and one and two, like that? Yeah, would, this, would the two in the top right corner go to the bottom left corner? Like, do you switch that side as well, or just that? So, do you just switch the first number? You switch these two? Yeah, just those two. Just those two. Got it. Just switch oh, those two on the main diagonal, and then change the signs on the other diagonal. All right, cool. Yep. That's right. Is that making sense? Now, why does that work? Why does changing, switching the main diagonal and changing the sign of the other and dividing them all by, why in the world would that produce the opposite matrix, the inverse matrix, the matrix that multiplied by the original will give you back to the identity? Well, that's a long proof, and we're not going to do it. But I'd love to show it to you. Come on by office errors. We can do it. But it's covered in higher math. That's what they do beyond calculus is stuff like that. They prove things like that in classes called linear algebra. If you're a math major, it's something you take after calculus. You talk about all that kind of stuff. So, so now we have to do it, the by hand method on this one, because we can't put letters into our calculator. There's computers that can do it, of course. But our graphing calculator can't do letters, unless you have the TI-92. That one does letters. That one's pretty fancy. All right, so let me let you do it. So go ahead and do the by hand rule. Remember, switch the main diagonal. That's... These two, right? Switch their order, switch positions with those two. Change the signs on the other two. And then divide all four of them by the determinant, which is main diagonal multiplied by this other diagonal. All about those diagonals. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Singular means it, it's not parent. It's singular. So in other words, it has no inverse. That's how you can remember it. So those, some matrices don't have the inverse. They don't have spots. They're single. That's how you remember it that way. So singular means it's alone. Non-singular, it's not single, it's married, it has an inverse. So basically, if you do it on your calculator, it says air, that means it has no inverse. It's singular. That happens because the determinant is zero. You can't divide by zero. Any matrix whose determinant is zero has no inverse.
We, what, what number do we have in the real number system that has no inverse? Zero, zero. Zero, right? What, zero is the only number that has no inverse, because if you inverted it, it would be one over zero, which is undefined, right? There's zero can't multiply by anything to go back to one, can it? It's the only number that can't go back to the identity element. All right, switch the main diagonal. B goes here, 10 goes there. Good so far. Change the signs on the other two. Is that good so far? And now we got to find the determinant. What's the determinant? Main diagonal multiplied 10B minus other diagonal multiplied 11B. It's going to be negative 1B or just negative B, huh? Got to divide all four by negative B. Is that too quick? I'm not done yet. I'm going to divide them, but I want to hold up for a minute there for you. Did you all see what I did for the determinant? It's main diagonal multiplied minus other diagonal multiplied. 10B minus 11B. I'm sorry. Jeffrey. Determinant? It's main diagonal minus other. Officially, it's AD minus BC. Uh-huh. So main diagonal, it's all about diagonals. Main diagonal multiplied minus other diagonal multiplied. So then divide all four of these by negative B. See what I did there? And then simplify if you can. B over negative B? Negative. negative one. These guys, two negatives make positive. These guys, positive one. And these guys, just negative 10 over B. There's the inverse. There's the inverse done by hand. Is that good? So just write those steps on your 3 by 5 card. Questions I can answer? Are we going to do it for something 2 by 2 or are you going to do it for 3 by 2? No, yeah, 3 by 3s and above we'll never do by hand. I'll show you. So we good there? Nothing by hand. So only two by two by hand, three by three, whoops, three by three or bigger, or bigger by calculator. So you would just put that thing into your calculator and hit the inverse button on it. I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. Isn't that good? Um, probably. Yeah, but, but you do have to know, I mean, I could put one since it was in the homework. It is fair game that I would put one with letters. So then you'd have to know the by hand. Does that make sense? Whichever part it's on. You'd have to know the by hand for two by twos. So you do have to know that. That is fair game. But three by threes or bigger, you don't. But does that make sense? You do have to know the two by two by hand rule because we just did one with letters. So whichever part was on, it could be there with letters. Is it impossible to do three by three by hand or is it just really long? No. It's not impossible. It's just horrible. Let's look at it. Yeah, just something we need to look at for this section is here we're going to see some of the power of matrices. They are mighty. They can do difficult things, lickety split. So uh, we want to solve that three equations, three letters thing using a matrix super quick, super easy. Now, we, have we talked about RREF already and done that? Because you could do that. That'd be fine. Now, after I'm done describing this to you, you'll probably think, Mr. Heron, why are you saying all that? I just want to do RREF. That's okay. You could do that. But, uh, but, but I'm talking to two crowds in here. There's a crowd that's going to move on and go to higher math. And so for that crowd, I want to just get your feet wet in thinking about matrix theory and what really, what really goes on here. So here's, here's the idea behind it. So what's going on here is you could peel off 
the numbers and just have the letters. 24, 59, minus 12, 16, minus 10, 6, 3, 4, negative 1. You see what I did there? I just got rid of the X, Y, Z. That's the same numbers without the X, Y, Z. That's called the coefficient matrix. That's the matrix containing all the coefficients, isn't it? The numbers next to the letters. It's the coefficient. Coefficient matrix. Put next to that your letters in a column. Now, you might think, like, why are they in a column? That's weird. Yeah, right. It's right. I just don't have time for everything. If I was teaching linear algebra, we'd talk more about it. I've never taught linear algebra. Um, and then the right side, you put your answers, 10, negative 2, negative 9. So what I've done is I've transformed three regular equations into one big matrix equation. Notice that's one equation that says everything those three equations say. Right? It's one big matrix equation. Well... What I can do is solve that matrix equation in one step. How so? Well, think about it. Now, remember, this is another world. This is an alien world we're in here. So to know how to operate in this alien world of matrices, think about what we do in our world. And it'll make you think better and more clearly about the operations we take in our real number system. Like anything, when you go higher, you get better perspective on the lower stuff, don't you? Think with me for a second. How would you solve, I don't know, 7x equals 3? Divide by 7. Yeah, it's a piece of cake for you, right? You just go, just divide by 7. Easiest thing in the world. Right, great. So if you have a number times a letter equals another number, you just divide by that number because that gets rid of it, and that gets the letter alone, and that solves your thing, right? Well, let's do the same thing for this big matrix equation, right? We have a number, a, ba a matrix number, times a letter, a matrix letter equals a number. Same kind of thing, right? Number, letter, number. Number, letter, number, right? So why can't we just do the same thing? What, what do you mean the same thing? What's the same thing? What would I do? What I do? I divided both sides by the number in front of the letter to get rid of it so the letter would be alone. So why don't I divide both sides of the equal, here's the equal sign, right? Divide both sides of the equal sign by that big entire matrix, right? Don't write this down, but just think with me. Divide both sides by that. You, you get the idea? Right, it'll cancel here. The letters will be alone and we'll have our answer. That's true. That's actually true. Don't write it down. We're gonna, it's going to look a little different when we're done. But that concept I'm giving to you is, is true. Right? That makes sense? But just dividing by the entire matrix. And then that will put all three letters, X, Y, Z, alone. We'll have our answer. Okay, great. That's all great. Except how do we divide matrices? We haven't talked about that. Right? We've added them, subtracted them, and multiplied them, haven't we? We have not divided matrices yet. And I'm talking to you about dividing matrices. How do you divide matrices? We haven't done that. So if I just knew how to divide matrices, we could do it. But I don't know how to divide matrices. So let's think about how to divide matrices. How do you divide matrices? You ever thought of any? Calculator? Yeah, it won't do it. Maybe you type divide on the matrices, it'll go air, I'm unhappy, you're bugging me, what are you doing? It won't like that. Yeah, what? What is the thing? Now think about the real number rule. Think about it. Think about when I divide by 7. What is dividing, really? It's multiplying by the inverse, isn't it? Dividing is not like some brand spanking new thing totally unrelated to the other operations. Dividing is upside down multiplying. You know that. Dividing is multiplying by the inverse. That's what it is. Dividing is just inverse multiplying, isn't it? So let's go, so, and we know how to do inverses, and we know how to do multiplying. In matrices. We know how to do the inverses of matrices. We know how to multiply matrices. So we can divide matrices by multiplying by the inverse. That's how you divide matrices. That's how you divide anything, really. Right? But let's be a little careful. There's one special wrinkle. Let's go back. Let's think really clearly. It'll make you think more clearly about that simple equation than you've probably ever thought before. Oh, it was 7x equals 3, wasn't it? So was that what it is? Yeah, 7 
7x equals 3. Okay, so what do I do now? Let, let me do it in terms of multiplying by the inverse. So what would I do? To, to get x alone, I would multiply both sides by 1 7, huh? Multiply both sides by 1 7, cancels it, x is alone, there's your answer, 3 7, right? Same thing as dividing, huh? Just multiply by the inverse. But hold on. Hold on. Do you know, I, I didn't really do the same thing to both sides here. We've gotten so casual over the years. I assumed the commutative properties, which is what you're talking about, Ryan. Here it's time to look closer at that, which is not really true in the matrix world. What am I talking about? First off, what is the commutative property? To commute is to go back and forth. People drive to work and back, back and forth, back and forth. Commute, it means you can change the order of things. Multiply it, and it makes no difference, right? Right? Two times three, is that any different than three times two? Nah, same thing. Who cares? Is three times one-seventh any different than one-seventh times three? Nah, same thing. Who cares? In the real number world, sure. Same thing. Who cares? But in the matrix world, not the same thing. We care. In the matrix world, you cannot switch the order of matrices. It does not come out the same. In fact, you should know that because remember, the inner numbers must match for the size to go. You can't even do it in the other order sometimes, let alone the answer coming out the same. Right? Think with me. Think with me for a second about that. If I had some 3 by 2 matrix, I was multiplying by a 2 by 5. Right? This was the size of the first one. This, I'm not even going to write out the matrix. So let me just give you the size numbers. The two, that would be okay because the two inside are mess. But if I switched them, if I put the 2 by 5 on the left and the 3 by 2 on the right, no, you can't even do it. The two in numbers, you can't even, you're not even allowed to multiply it in the opposite order. So we see from there clearly that matrix multiplication is not commutative. You can't switch the order. It doesn't allow you to go back and forth. That's a fundamental difference, which we just take for granted in the real number system. You don't think every time you do something, oh, I'm using the commutative property right now. You don't think that, right? You just do it. You just know it. Well, here you have to be thinking about it. When I put this 1 7th on the right side, I was using the commutative property, which I cannot do for matrices. What do you mean? Where am I using the commutative property? Well, did I really do to the left side really, truly, exactly, precisely what I did to the right? Not quite. I want you to say, yeah, you multiply both by 1, 7. Well, yeah, but on the left side, I multiplied the left by 1, 7. And over here, I multiplied the right by 1, 7. That's not the same. If you're going to multiply on the left on one side, then you better multiply by the left on the other also. Then you've truly done the same thing to both sides. Now, we know with the real numbers, who cares? It makes no difference. Right. But in the matrix world, it matters. So if you do the left on one side, you've got to do the left on the other. It's different. Okay, so now we have all we need. So now, with all that information, let's go back. We want to divide by this matrix, right? But how are we going to divide? We're going to multiply by the inverse. So where am I going to multiply by the inverse? I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go inverse. I'm just going to go I and V. That'll be the inverse of this guy. I'll put the inverse on the left. Here's the equal sign. And I'll put the inverse right here as well. See how I put it on the left? on the left side of the equal sign, and on the left, on the right side of the equal sign. So that's consistent, isn't it? That's good. So what will happen? These guys will cancel. Why? How do you know? Because that's what an inverse does. When it hits itself, they eliminate. Like a 1 seventh hitting a 7. You with me? See how this inverse will take that? You think, well, what inverse? Well, the inverse of this, whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. But the inverse of this thing times itself will... Go away, won't it? That's what an inverse does. It cancels it. Like, like what does 1 7 do to 7? 1. Right? That's what an inverse does when it multiplies itself. Right? I'm getting no nod, so I just keep saying this again and again and again. Is that, am I making, am I doing the Charlie Brown? 1, 1, 1. I'm out in space and you're here. What's happening here? Are, are we communicating? That's what an inverse does to anything. That's what it means to be an inverse. When an inverse hits itself, it's 1. Right? So I'm saying whatever the inverse matrix is of this thing, when it hits it, boom, they're gone, and I get the x, y, z alone. That's how I isolate the letter. So what do you do on the right side? Exactly what you did on the left side. Inverse times whatever's there. So you've got to take the inverse. Let me write that out now. The inverse 20, whoop, 24 
uh, 59, 12, 16, negative 10, 6, 3, 4, negative 1, inverse, whatever your calculator tells you that is, times the 10, negative 2, negative 9. And you'll get your whole answer all at once. You ready? Let's do it. So put this into your calculator. Put in 24, 59, 20. Put this into matrix A. Just put that into matrix A. And then take A. Let me get this stuff out of the way now. And then take A inverse times. Oh, and you got to put this one into B or whatever. B. And hit enter. So you got to, first off, you got to you got to put this one into matrix A, this, this matrix, and this one into B. So first put that one into A, that one into B, and then go A inverse times B. A inverse. Times these. Right, I multiplied A inverse on both sides. Got rid of the left side. Gives you the answer. Gets the letter alone on the left side. Gives the answer on the right side. Isn't the A negative 12 not a positive 12? Did I mess it up? Yes, you're right. Thank you. I couldn't see that negative. Negative 12. Thank you. Anything else I messed up on? Looks right. Okay, thanks. It is. All right, y'all getting that? You get all three answers at once. One step on a matrix problem. You get the whole thing. So it's a 3 by 3. Is this making sense? You guys getting this? So then A inverse times B. Oh, yeah, and I got some messy. Um, oh, they say round. Yeah, did you get negative 4.18, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah? Let me write it out. Yeah, so here's what I got. I got the answer negative 4.18. They want you to round um, to 100, two places. So negative 4.18 and 6.16 and 21.09 um, rounds to 10. That's X, Y, and Z. There it is. We got X, Y. We've got all three letters at once. Yeah, higher math, you prove things. Yeah, so it's all letters everywhere. Well, it depends. There's, there's two ways to go in higher math. Um, does that make sense on that? Does everybody do you get the theory behind that? Does that idea make sense? It's like a big equation. It's number times letter equals number. So you just multiply both sides by the opposite of that number, the inverse. It cancels it out on the left side, gets letters alone. On the right side, you multiply and you get the answer. Yeah, right. Um, can you just go across? Wrong, well, yeah, because I got the wrong answer because it was supposed to be a word cast. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Do you have to go on YouTube? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. There's probably there's somewhere to set how many digits you see or something. I think go on YouTube. That's what I do for everything. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Jeffrey has a one too. Yeah, this one will be on YouTube. Yeah.